Let's look at 10.7, projectile motion in two dimensions. So we're in chapter 10, and the idea of chapter 10 is that we're looking at motion in a plane, which means that we can have some kind of motion that is curved, like, a, like projectile motion. Okay? Now, we've already seen projectile motion earlier on, when we had, when we had that um, ball drop with the cart and we saw the ball have this kind of motion right okay um, so this is projectile motion projectile motion can look in various ways you can have uh, an object thrown like that and it can land on the same height or you can have an object like that land on a different height right that's its final height that's its initial height or you can have it land like that Right, there's lots of different ways. You can have it thrown from an aeroplane. If there's an aeroplane flying there, imagine, just use your imagination. That's an aeroplane. And you drop an object. Then we know that this object, it, uh, if you're standing on the ground looking, looking at this, we know that it's not going to drop down. It's not going to do that. But it's going to have that kind of projectile shape, that parabolic shape. Okay? All right. So I hope you enjoyed these lovely pictures. Let's, let's look at this in a bit more serious light. So if you've got projectile motion there, right? So your particle moves along this kind of path. Okay. So um, let's see. If your particle is there, just say now it's there. Um, so what we want to do with, with projectile motion is we want to break it up into X and Y components. Okay? And we want to describe the motion of a projectile in terms of its X motion and its Y motion. We are breaking it up into its X and Y. So we can start off by just looking at what is its position. And that is a position vector. And we can say it's equal to Rx i plus r y j meters. Let's see what the textbook. I just want to make sure. Okay, it uses x i and y j. Let me rewrite that. This could also be just written x i plus y j. All right. So the point is, if you if you break this up into its x component and into its y component you're going to get the position vector. Then the next thing we can look at is the velocity. What is the velocity at this instant? Let's go green. Okay, We know that the velocity at any point along the curve, the velocity is tangent. Okay, The, the resultant velocity is tangent. There's V. But V can also be broken up, so we know that it would be dr dt. So you're taking the, the time derivative of the position, and then this would equal dx dt i plus dy dt j, which is simply vx i plus vy j, and that's meters per second. I'm putting these in brackets. Okay, that's what these are. They're brackets. Okay? So now this guy has a Vx component and a Vy component. And I'm just going to just draw many of these. It, originally, that's your direction of V. And there's Vx. And there's Vy. And over there... There is your V and Vx, Vy. I hope it's making sense. And then you at the top, there is V. I'm just doing this again and again just to get the idea. These, this is the direction of the velocity. It keeps changing. Its magnitude keeps changing. Um, so there's your Vx and Vy. Now the important thing here is a couple of things. First of all, your Vx is constant. 
that means your ax is zero there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction i'm going to repeat this 10 bazillion times our assumption is that if we break this guy up into its x and y motion the acceleration in the horizontal direction is constant that means i know it doesn't look that way here i'm sorry okay but <laughs> Vx here is the same as Vx there, is the same as Vx, is the same as Vx, is the same as that Vx. Vx remains constant. Um, so we, we assume that there's no drag, there's no wind resistance. That's the assumption. There's no wind resistance. And so there's no resistance, there's no, nothing accelerating positively or negatively in the x direction. The other thing is um, the only acceleration acting on this particle is minus g. So it's, um, let's change again to something else. Minus g. That's the only acceleration and it is obviously in the y direction. So ay is minus g, ax is zero, and ay is minus g. Okay? So um, that's enough for now. We will continue in the next one again on um, projectile motion.